Hey guys, I'm James. And I'm Steven. Alright, we're here from Real Bias Gaming to talk about some of the changes coming to Season 3 for League of Legends. And mostly going to be talking about the items and the changes and new items and things like that that are coming in. Uh, this is all for a post that Morello made on the forums uh, just a couple days ago. So, first of all, it, it does seem like, it, well, the first post they mentioned is that AD, or attack damage, is actually getting cheaper, and the attack speed is actually getting more expensive. Alright, so this seems, I mean, right off the bat, it really seems like they want to reduce the effectiveness and, and uh, how often on-hit effects will actually be able to happen. Um, and they, but they still want AD carries to still hit just as hard. So more damage per hit, but definitely uh, not hitting as often. So what do you think about that, Steven? Yeah, I mean, I guess I kind of agree with that. I feel like it, it could just be more of they're just trying to move attack speed more towards the late game. Because right now it seems like a very big emphasis on getting um, some attack speed early with starting off with boots and stuff like that. So maybe it's just moving more towards that and making them more effective early game with giving them... AD at cheaper prices. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely seems like when an AD carry gets to that like Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer build, they have and maybe Berserker, uh, the Berserker Greaves as well, the boots. Um, then they have a whole ton of attack speed. They're critting really often and they're attacking really quick. And you give them red buff, or you get somebody like uh, Ezreal or Corky who gets a phage, and you're almost guaranteed to proc within two or three hits that happen in just about a second and a half. So they're really re reducing that. Now, it is too bad because it does seem like uh, Teemo is going to be nerfed by this, uh, mainly just the attack speed Teemo, because he definitely relies on, on hit effects. Uh, so kind of too bad. We'll have to see what, how Teemo deals with the new patch. Now, armor and magic resist is getting more expensive, but penetration, uh, armor and magic, magic penetration, both percentage and flat, are actually getting reduced. Now, this is kind of interesting because it seems like, I, I mean, it's, it's going to be a little harder to burn through what they have, but they're going to have less anyways. I, I feel like this is really going to really hurt tanks and bruisers and people like that. Uh, it's, in some ways, it can actually make AD carries and uh, AP carries really, really strong. Yeah, and I, I feel like this is mainly uh, a move towards top lane. Oh, yeah? Trying to move them away from being just focusing so much on tank and move them more towards focusing more on damage, especially with looking at how AD is getting cheaper, well, which will also have a direct effect on them. So I think they're trying to change the meta, basically, of the top lane some to okay. move it kind of away from going so tanky early game. Because right now it's, you know, you get, you get your heart of gold and then you just kind of build tanky until... You know, you can get some damage later on. Right, like you Trinity build Force or something. a Heart of Gold, an Ionic Spark, a Trinity Force. Right, all somewhat tanky items that also kind of help your damage, but really focused on, and especially top laners, maybe a Trinity Force right into a Guardian Angel. Right, and and it does seem like that uh, armor and magic is becoming more expensive. It's going to be harder for them to kind of yeah. rush those kind of items. Yeah. And it could just possibly too that people are just getting too tanky too early for what they want, and so they're just trying to up that so that they get tanky more around what they originally want or what they're thinking. It is going to make for a much more exciting game if, if a lot more top lanes really are forced to go into more of a damage role. So you have a, you go, we go back to, I remember like way back in, in beta and, and early season one where you had yeah, a melee damage dealer and range damage dealers. You didn't necessarily have these tanks and bruisers who were really hard to kill and dealt damage and then pure damage focused yeah. people or just one or two of them. So... There you go. Now, moving on to the slowing effects. Uh, so the slowing effects here, global slow particle is now, now appears faster. The slow effects on Phage Trinity Force have now been reduced, um, and especially reduced for ranged characters. So this is definitely going to be interesting. It's mostly going to affect characters like Corkin, as who usually get that Trinity Force. Uh, now, this really used to be uh, Ash's special area. She was the only AD carry who really got that awesome slow it, just with a regular on-hit effect every single attack. I kind of like this change. seems to be moving more towards the way that they did red buff, where they just significantly reduced the slow on it because junglers could come out of the jungle with red buff. They hit you once, and you're basically just confirmed dead because it, the slow is so effective. Yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it works out. I mean, yeah, I mean, right now you're probably looking at mainly bottom with... Uh, 
as in Corky, but I know there are some top laners that get that, so it'll be interesting to see how that affects them as well. Yeah. Especially with trying to gank and stuff like that in that top lane, which is so important. Right. Now, speaking of ganking and slows, they actually made a change to uh, movement speed. Looks like across the board, every single champion is getting an additional 25 movement speed, whereas boots are giving you 25 less movement speed. So once everybody yeah. has level 2 boots, you everybody comes out to the same movement speed, but where everybody's going to be a little faster early game. Yeah, and then this seems like basically just a response to everyone buying boots <laughs> at, at the beginning, because that's just like what everyone does. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm, new character, what should I build? Oh, boots first. Boots, boots and pots. pots. Yeah, it seems like every single lane, even junglers sometimes, just you get boots, three pots, doesn't matter where you are, that's always the safe bet uh, for a start. However, there's these interesting changes where you can actually get tier 3 boots and upgrade your boots to even better. Uh, looks like some support changes. Here are some of the examples. So, uh, you can upgrade them to Fuhrer, which increases movement speed in combat. You can increase movement speed of the allies moving towards you, which is interesting, kind of more like a tanky feel, right? Um, distortion just decreases the cooldown of Ghost, Teleport, and Flash. And then Alacrity grants a small additional base movement speed bonus just throughout the game. Yeah. And I was originally looking at this, and I thought that you just automatically change the boots to this, but it's actually just a buff on top of the boots. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of what which ones become uh, really popular. And yeah, I mean, it seems like it's just basically trying to give some more utility to the boots, so that they kind of they kind of I guess scale a little bit later on. Right, right. It does seem like a wasted slot later on, except for the fact that you have to have them because you're going to be slow, so slow without them. It's cool that they're giving them that extra extra item you can essentially spend your money yeah. on late game. And it seems like they're, um, which we'll see later on too, is that they're trying to give, I, I feel like it's a very big deal for um, supports because it kind of gives them a little bit more utility, which we'll also see in later items that they're really trying to buff items for support so that they have more stuff that can actually help them. Right, well, and definitely a lot of times supports will sometimes forgo getting boots until their second or third item. Sometimes, yeah. usually support is the only role that really doesn't get boots right off the bat. And so this will definitely affect them right off the bat where they're a little bit faster and they can actually be okay with not buying boots until a second or third item. So moving on, uh, some items that were are definitely going to be removed from the game. Potion of Agility, it's pretty simple. They don't want you to get cheap attack speed. That definitely seems the way that they want to go with that one. Heart of Gold, now this is an interesting interesting item removal. I mean, it's not going to be at all in the game. What do you think about that, Steven? Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I mean, it's just one less um, GP5, but I think, that's, uh, I think that's kind of a good thing just because... The whole thing would just, well, it's just all buy GP5 items. It's kind of boring. <laughs> and we get to see it kind of move. And I, I guess, from what I heard, that it basically just feel like it's overpowered. Just getting too much health early game. And I think it kind of goes along with everything else. You know, they're trying to trying to change the meta, trying to make it not so static anymore. Right, not so tanky and not, I mean, games are really not decided in mid-game anymore because characters can get so tanky so easily and push it into late game. Or at least it's much harder to win in the mid-game because everybody has access to these, access to these really cheap health yeah. and resist well, items. Yeah, especially in NA right now. I mean, you look at stuff like in Korea or something like that, it probably won't be too big of a deal. They'll still play their very aggressive early games and stuff like that. Right. But, Hopefully it'll help to move NA towards not being so passive. <laughs> there you we'll go, good see. call. Well, one other item I want to note about is that they are actually removing Leviathan. And now, nobody really cares about Leviathan. Nobody, of course, gets in ranked. Very rarely really you see it in normals. I actually like this removal just because it seems like, you know, if you have a new player coming in and they have all these items they can choose from, they're like, oh, I want health, and they... They read this item and it seems cool to them and, and they'll buy it. I like that it's being removed because you remove that choice from somebody who maybe doesn't know any better. You don't allow, you don't give them that choice to buy an item that's really going to be completely worthless for them. Mm. So I, I'm really glad they removed that. Doran's items, all, all three of the Doran's items, the blade, the ring, and the shield, it, it definitely seems like they're really trying to focus them on early game to really help you out. Uh, but then really not be nearly as effective late game yeah. or, or just mid game. So like Doran's Blade, you don't have any kind of lifesteal anymore. It just recovers a flat amount of health now on hit, which is going to help you a lot more early game, but do almost nothing late game when you have way, way more health and the flat amount is uh, barely doing anything for you. The Doran's Ring, you get to gain mana on a kill. Now, I don't know, the, the patch, these this uh, post sometimes mentions kill as referring to champions or minions. 
and sometimes it refers to it just as killing champions. So I, I hope this is just killing champions. Killing minions would kind of be uh, a little ridiculous, well, but... I, I don't know about that, because, I mean, it feels like what they're doing here is trying to make this... Wait, going back to early days where this is... Everyone got a Doran's item as their first thing. And so I think it helps out with those... Um, with the AP mids, because basically, like, you don't have to worry about getting so much... You don't have to worry about mana regen. Maybe you can stay in lane longer. You know, more stuff could happen. Okay, so you'll and get so more I, mana I, for... I feel like it's not too big. And I mean, I I can't imagine it being that much mana. That sure. Maybe like be... 0.3 mana per oh. minion kill or something like it's that. Probably, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, not going to be too minimal. much. So I, I, I see it not being too bad. There you go. And then definitely the Doran Shield, of course, blocking a base amount of damage from champion auto attacks. Uh, so these are going to be much better for early game, and then scale a lot less late game. So I really like the changes coming in for this one. Uh, moving on to just a couple items here, the Vamp Scepter. It's interesting to see, it will it will be interesting to see how much it actually costs, because now it's going to build out of a blade, um, it's, or out of, out of the uh, long sword. I'm sorry, they just, and it'll always give you attack damage uh, along with the life seal. So uh, definitely also something, because this has now become, for a lot of AD carries, they'll get a Dorn's Blade or two, and then right into a Vamp Scepter, yeah. and then build their BF Sword into Infinity Edge or uh, Bloodthirster. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it could be a, a good early game item for um, for the AD carries, or maybe even top, we'll see. But it seems like it mm. might be... Um, maybe they're trying to move this more towards a jungle item, maybe more, because you get some attack speed, you get some life steal, which is going to be probably pretty helpful to the jungle, so... We'll see how that kind of works out within the meta, but yeah, it's kind of interesting to move it from just a base item to something right. that gets so, built. Yeah, like I said, it'll be interesting to see how expensive it is yeah. if it ends up being that like 1,000, 1,200 gold item, or if, if it's really just you buy the long sword and then it's you know an extra 300 gold for the Vamp Scepter. So yeah. that'll be interesting. Another item here is the gun blade. The gun here's the change to the gun blade. Active has had its base damage reduced and now has an AP ratio. And the single single target attacks and spells versus champions reduce the cooldown of the active by three seconds. Now there's one champion that pops in my head right away. This was a Kali. It's a 60 second 60 second cooldown right now. And for every single target attack, which she has her ult and her Q, and yeah. not to mention her auto attacks. You know, is this going to be a slow that does extra damage every, you know, every 10 seconds that it comes off cooldown for her? I mean, this is going to be crazy. Yeah, and I imagine, too, Jax, because, I mean, Jax, like, can get pretty fast. He can do some pretty, like, this is, like, almost seems like a direct buff to Jax, who probably doesn't really even need that. So. Right, <laughs> a, a slow and a ranged attack on Jax that he's going to be able to cast, you could say, easily every, I mean, on average, every 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, because he's attacking, reducing that cooldown by so much. So this this is kind of scary. We'll have to yeah. keep updated on this one. <laughs> yeah, anyone with an attack speed steroids probably going to be going for this as long as they have that good AP AD ratios going for them. Absolutely, absolutely. So then Phantom Dancer. Uh, now here's the change to Phantom Dancer. It grants less movement speed and less attack speed, and it but it grants ignore unit collision oh, God, passively. So it, it's still going to be obviously great with Infinity Edge. You get that extra crit. Anything that gives you extra crit with Infinity Edge is going to be awesome. Now it does the move speed on Phantom Dancer was helpful, and there were some champions definitely kind of in, in the older days where you could just stack Phantom Dancers, three of them, you know, and be fat and not even need boots at all at that point. But I will say the the move speed that it grants you, it was definitely helpful, but not essential for AD carries. So I, I don't feel like this is going to be too bad. What do you think, Steven? Yeah, I mean. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I, I feel like not having the unit collision could be some interesting stuff. You might see some more people maybe getting it that are not AD carries. But I don't know. Because, I mean, probably good help, like, initiating fights and stuff like that. When there's minions around, you don't have to worry about that. I mean... Right. Well, so, and definitely, like, junglers. I mean, I wonder if they'll keep the price the same. Maybe this will be a jungle item where you get to that mid-game or late early game, you know, where they're still ganking. And, I mean, this is the biggest problem for junglers and trying to uh, do some ganks on the different lanes that oftentimes minions will get in your way. And so unit collision could be a big problem. So it'll be interesting to see where yeah. this can kind of fit in. If yeah. Maybe junglers will rush Phantom Dance in order to get that in time to really have some yeah, awesome I mean, ganks. This could just make people who usually run Ghost even more scary. <laughs> they already have unit collision. And so just Ghost now just that little extra boost. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Could be interesting. Yep. Well, there you go, guys. That does it for part one. Stay tuned for more discussion on the new items. We'll finish it up in a day or two. Uh, you can find the link to all the items that we talked about in the uh, comment section below.